Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Camille Essex, host of the Speaker Podcast. We are here live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm here with the creator and founder of Faith Walker with my girl, my sister, Brittany is in the building. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> hey, hey. So this is my first in-person interview. I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> we gonna be fine, girl. We gonna have fun. So anyway, so Brittany, tell us a little bit about what you do in your brand. Hi everyone, so I started Faith Walker. I got out of the military, what, in 2018? And it's so cool, we both got out of the military. Wanna do it? <laughs> so I got out of the military literally on faith. Like I knew it was nothing but God. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was scary, but I was stepping out on faith and just being obedient. And I started Faith Walker. So it has just truly been a journey. Um, and I've just been embracing it. Cool, so what is Faith Walker about? Like what inspired you, the name of the brand? What's the premise of the brand? Like what is the message of Faith Walker? Cool shirt, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of the um, Letterman crew necks. It's actually um, a popular item. But going back to the question, so I got out of the military from stepping out on Faith and I started, um, it's called Walk Into Your Journey. It's actually a nonprofit organization. And God was like, you know, you have to do this conference. And the whole conference was built on faith, Camille. Like, girl, I didn't have no money. I didn't have no sponsorships. I just knew like this was the vision that God was giving me. And so it was literally, it took me to do it all in faith. And so from that, Faith Walker was actually birthed because I had to do the conference on faith and so faith walker is just stands for like a lot of people don't do stuff because what the lack of faith. fear and <laughs> faith <laughs> yes and so faith is the substance of things that we can't see right so yes it is based on spiritual you know god and that's the foundation but a lot of things it's like okay just applying for that job mm -hmm. we tell ourselves oh i'm not going to get that job because of the lack of faith that you're going to get it but oh. you slit your throat before you even apply like you need to give yourself self the opportunity before exactly. you even say oh, i'm not gonna you don't know just go for it exactly the things that we tell ourselves yeah so i my desire and what I pray that people get out of this is yeah. like you can do anything he said God says you can all things are possible right. with him and just to have faith the size of a mustard seed yeah. so rather it's applying for the job having faith that girl I, I lost my phone I don't know my phone is like God you know can you help me find my phone <laughs> you know just having faith that you don't find your yeah. phone yeah. or your car keys or just anything just having faith about every single thing yeah um and that, that's kind of my story too and those if you don't know I was also in the military. I was in the Navy. Uh, stepped out army. Army. <laughs> about the Navy, y'all. But look, but who wins the football games? I know. Army. <laughs> what? No, look, we're not Camille, doing that. Seriously, I think Army won. I don't. We I, won. I don't. I did not watch the game. Y'all Google that. Y'all. You know, that. I really do believe Army won. <laughs> y'all Google that because we did. When the last time y'all won? The last game. We ha we'll Google it later. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, we'll Google, Google it. it. <laughs> Anyway, so I stepped out of the Navy on faith. I stepped on the Navy on faith. Same mm -hmm. thing. Um, really, I didn't have a job lined up yet. I had been accepted into school, and I had not confirmed my apartment yet. Mm -hmm. So I was literally driving from California to North Carolina on the phone on the interstate looking for apartment. Really? And I found my apartment while I was on 40 uh, East. So you're a real faith walker? Yeah, when I was going to Arizona, I was in Arizona and I found something. And I'm driving on 40 mm -hmm. East, like giving them my account information and booking my apartment. And you hadn't seen the apartment? No, I hadn't seen it. <laughs> you know, it's the faith for me. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I said to myself, God's name is on the line. Mm -hmm. He's taking me through so many other things. Why would he at this point not not provide for me that's real so i was like you know what i'm gonna have an apartment i said what i wanted i said i wanted like uh, marble countertops mm -hmm. i wanted an island i wanted a large kitchen i want large windows with natural so light you were real specific i was very specific you know i was very specific <laughs> and when i got my apartment what did it have i got quartz countertops mm -hmm. i got stainless steel appliances i got large windows mm -hmm. with the natural light i got my large walk-in closet I got everything specifically what I asked for. And you have to be because he says you do not have 
because you do not ask. You have not because you asked yes. about it. Yeah. So, and I'm happy. I love my space, and he worked it out. And when I left the Navy and got my job, mm -hmm. I'm making twice as well as making in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't think just because you leave the military, like, there's no life after the military. That's another conversation for yes. another day. We got to bring you back for that. But definitely. We definitely. So the premise of this conversation tonight, we want to talk about forgiveness. Yeah. And this is something we all have struggled with. I don't know about you guys, but I have. There have been people who have done things to me. Um, and it's been hard. Like, and it's one thing if you do it one time, mm -hmm. but the people that do it over and over again, and it's like, Okay, I'm trying to heal from the last time you did something to me, but then you keep doing something again. Mm -hmm. So, Brittany, first of all, how do you deal with people that do things with, to you over and over again? And what is your, your um, perspective on faith? So, okay, the whole thing of forgiveness, it's a process, right? It is. And I have come to discover that forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you mm -hmm. so that you can heal. And also, when you forgive people, because you was talking about, like, you know, when they do things over and over, just because you forgive them, that doesn't mean that you have to allow them back in your personal space. That mm -hmm. just means I acknowledge what you did, and now I'm going to set a healthy boundary for me and for you so that they don't keep repeating the same thing. And so I think it's more so of that you have to set healthy boundaries. Right. And don't feel like, you know, oh, I forgave this person, so now you can have access to right. me. Because everybody can't have access to right. you. So, to answer that is setting healthy boundaries. But what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So, if someone keeps doing the same thing, we'll give an example. Like, for me, I have been in this situation mm -hmm. before where someone keeps doing things. And so, it's like, okay, well, you know what? I just know not to invite you to that because then I won't then you're no longer in that space. Right. So now I don't have to worry about if I have to forgive you or not because now I've set a healthy boundary that I still love you, right. but I'm not going to invite you. Yeah. So there won't be anything, you know, to happen. Yeah. Um, I guess for me with forgiveness, it's definitely a process mm -hmm. because you really have to look at, um, sometimes things, go, they go so much deeper and there yes. can be layers, um, especially if it's a family member you know, or maybe uh, in a relationship. And if there's offenses that are, like, hitting in other places and they know, or maybe they don't know. Yeah. So, um, I, I want to ask this question. I'm going to play devil's advocate, guys. How do you <laughs> how do you handle a situation where the person is acting like they don't know what you're talking about when you bring it up? Or they're in a space to where they can't handle the conversation and they want to just be the victim when they're actually the offender you know Camille I'm just asking I just had to ask because <laughs> it's a real question it's a real question and I have learned and I because I've been in this situation that's why that's why I had to ask because it's just like can we just keep it real let's be 100 <laughs> so I've been in that situation, mm -hmm. and it was with a family member. But what I've had to learn is we only give them that power. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and the Bible talks about, like, it takes, I don't want to call anybody a fool. I'm not technically calling someone right, a fool. Right, right. But when you are more mature, and then when you're also more spiritually mature, you have to handle the situation differently. Right. So if you see that this person is not capable of owning up to what they have done, you can't force them. Right. They're just not in a space. Everyone doesn't like to be wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody can't admit that they're wrong. Like, you know what? I'm sorry. I did X, Y, and Z. Or not even just saying I did X, Y, and Z. Just leaving it at I'm sorry. You know? I offended you or I'm sorry for doing you know whatever mm -hmm. so I have just learned that's not my battle when people don't want to admit okay I am going to exit stage left because there the conversation is not getting anywhere so why frustrate yourself right when they're not even in the capacity mental capacity I have the mental capacity to admit when they're wrong or don't even see that they're right. wrong one thing I'm learning and, and I don't know about you guys watching um you got to learn to just 
I don't want to say leave people where they are, mm-hmm. but just realize, like you said, their capacity and just say, oh, okay, now I have to know how to govern myself accordingly and just handle you in a certain way. Yeah. Especially if it is a family member, because if not, it's like a cycle and it'll have you on this emotional mm-hmm. loop to where you never can really heal and give yourself closure, even if they don't give it to you. Right. You have to learn how to give yourself closure because if not, you'll be in this frustration over and over and mm-hmm. it would it will block you in other areas of your life like creativity with you know we're both branding out here if you're in school whatever you have going on it can impact relationships you know with other people yeah. so i'm learning how to just stay in my mind check oh, okay and keep some things very surface and not to go super deep with them because it's like you can't handle the other parts of me. Mm-hmm. You've shown me that you are not capable of handling the total me. And that's okay. And you have to learn how to say, you know, you get this much. Mm-hmm. And it's not about holding a grudge or um, being mean. But you have to learn how to protect this. Guarding your heart. Guarding your heart. Yes. That's, that's what I'm calling. <laughs> you have to learn how to guard your heart. And it took me a long time to get there mm-hmm. with... Um, the situation we just gonna keep it real and candid a lot of people I know some of your followers may not know me but my relationship with my mother like a lot of people that are close to me Mm -hmm. you know understand or you know the dynamic of my relationship with my mom and I forgive her Mm -hmm. I know it some people like they can't believe it but you have to like God has commanded us to forgive and everybody literally just they it's not that they don't want to love you. Sometimes people just don't know how. Mm. You know what I mean? So I have had to, instead of me being angry about the things and situations that has, you know, occurred, I just had to, one, learn how to guard my heart. Mm. Two, learn how to set healthy boundaries. And three, therapy really works. God in therapy, you know, it really does help because, yeah. you know, we're all fighting battles. And I just had to put on my spiritual glasses and say, you know what? I still love her. That's still my mother. But, you know, maybe I don't know the battles that she is facing. I was just about to say that. You know what I mean? Does it hurt? I'm not going to negate. Yes, I have feelings too. Right. But guess what? God said he will be your protector. He will, you know, he will comfort you. He will be everything that we need. He is the I am. You know, he says that he's the I am. So that has helped me. Not to be so angry. It has relieved me from being angry. It has relieved me from setting these expectations to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. It's helped me to forgive and to love. And then also, everyone loves you differently. We have these expectations of, since you have this title, you're supposed to love me like this. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to treat me like this. But everyone don't know how. You're right. And we think, oh, since you have this title of mother, father, sister, or brother, that you're supposed to treat us, you know, a certain way. But life circumstances on how people grow up, you know, they just, they don't know how. Yeah. And I think when our parents, um, maybe there are some things in their past they don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. And they feel like because we're their child, that's not the place for them to share those things with us. And that's understandable. But like you said, they have things that maybe they're still trying to process yeah. too and they don't know like you said they don't know how to but at the same time that doesn't mean I have to pick up your trauma or the trauma you try to pass on to me yes I can say I don't receive that and even the trauma that you may have received you found other ways to process it through therapy yeah. or you know talking with friends you know yeah. there's so many other outlets so I think for a lot of people watching, like we've all gone through gone through different things and we have to learn how to process those things in a positive way through therapy. I'm a PK, I grew up in church and um really? Yeah. I didn't know, did we talk about this? <laughs> I don't think so. I didn't know you was a PK girl. <laughs> yes. Okay. They, they they try to say we are the worst, but I don't that's not true. That's yeah. not true, okay? It's not true. We are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> I love PK friends. Yes. So, um, I'm sorry. Crap. God, bring it back to me right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, I was just saying, like, we have to learn how to just not decide what we're not taking on and saying, mm-hmm. you know what, this bag I can't carry. You yeah. know, and the things that they have passed on to us, we have to find a way 
to not let that hamper our relationships and friendships and sisterhoods with our friends, our businesses. Because if not, you know, we can create a, a brand and we'll bleed on our brand because we're trying to prove to the world and to our parents or relatives, you know, this thing we got going on in our mind to say, hoo hoo, you know, I told you so, I can make it, ha ha. Mm -hmm. And it's not a, re it's like, I want to call it quiet revenge. Yeah. Like in your mind, you're trying to, you know, seek revenge or um, affirm yourself through success when reality is a lack of validation. And you have to be validated from God and through healing, you know, and not just to do it um, just for checking the box. Mm -hmm. Like you have to check your motive. And it's like, why do you want to be successful? Is it to prove a point to say, you know, for everybody that didn't believe in me, for all the people that slept on me. And it's not really me, coming from a healed place. Right, yeah. right, right. So you have to really check what place that message is coming from. Even as a creative, we have to check that. We all do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, guys, um, if you're just tuning in, this is Brittany. Hi, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she is the creator of Faith Wear and Faith Walker. Mm -hmm. Faith Walker. Faith, sorry, Faith Walker. Mm -hmm, girl. And it's really dope. Check her out on Instagram. And we're just here. We're talking about forgiveness and the parentals and different things like that. So I hope you are getting something from this. Subscribe. Check out my merchandise on my website at CamilleEssick.com and hit that notification button and follow me on Instagram at CamilleEssick. So back to the conversation, Brittany. Um, we were just talking about forgiveness and you were sharing... Um, just being super transparent about your mom. So when did you reach your breaking point and realize I can't do this anymore? I don't even want to say it was a, I can't do this anymore. I was literally asking God, like, how do I supposed to love her? Mm. Show me how past all of the hurt, you know, all of every, just everything God, show me what's my position and how do I, you know, move forward. Right. Um, because when you're trying to do stuff out of your own strength, like I was just failing, like yeah. just getting let down, yeah. hurt, and just it was draining when you try to do stuff in your own strength. And so I just asked God, like, how do I set healthy boundaries? Like, yeah. what does that look like? Because you still, no one can ever replace your mom. Mm. You know what I mean? Like. So God showed me how to deal with this. And when I realized, like, you know, God will fill every void. And so I had to switch, again, put your spiritual glasses on. I had to switch my perspective. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at what I don't have, right. God has sent me this person and that person. It may not be, this is the problem. It don't be what we think or how we, how you know, package how we think yeah. it should be. And so I'm like... I do have people in my life who love me. I do yeah. have mother figures. So let me stop, you know, God, why this, why that? And playing the victim with God, like, why me? And he's like, why not you, Brittany, though? Mm -hmm. Or why not you, Camille? Like, he says, for I know the plans. And I'm not even trying to get, like, real deep, you know. No, but you're just but, being yourself. Yeah, yeah I'm, I am being myself. And these are the things that help me. Like, right. standing on God's word, he says, for I know the plans that I have for you. So instead of us singing, you know, why me, he knew this was going to happen. And instead of me focusing on what I don't have, I focus on what I do have. Right. And they help me, you know, switch my perspective. Yeah. And it also helped me set healthy boundaries, which in turn allowed me to guard my heart. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm not, okay, letting this person in just because they have a title. Right. Still love this person. But I now, for my sake and for your sake, these are the boundaries, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, that we're going to set. And I still love you, and this is how I'm going to, you know, how I can show right. my love and still be respectful and be, a, you know, operate as a child of God. So it just, it really took years, Camille, years. I have been going to therapy since I was probably like a sophomore in college. Mm -hmm. And it's just been helpful because you're forever evolving. Yeah. But it has definitely helped me in seeking God yeah. and standing on his word and God and, and it took because the per offenses offenses and not just with my mom but with other people as yeah. well and how do you deal with this and still love, love so people? do you think that the relationship you have with her are you able to see like how that's impacting your other relationships because of what you experienced with her yes <laughs> uh, because you feel abandoned mm. 
you know what I mean? So, okay, now you have this abandonment issue that you have to deal with because mm-hmm. the person who has, I'm getting real, real. Ooh, child. <laughs> <laughs> but I said I was going to allow God, you know, to just move. You feel a sense of abandonment because the person who brought you into this world, you know what I mean? Like, why aren't you, you wanting to be accepted by this person? Yeah. Um, but I've had to realize, like, I am accepted, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, um, by God, first and foremost. And not only that, really what has helped me is even though it's not packaged the way that you think it's supposed to be packaged, mm-hmm. I still have someone filling that void. It's either are you going to accept it or you're not. Right. And so once I really grab hold to that, I'm like, okay, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can still, I'm still rocking with you. I still love you. But I no longer, you can't give me something. And that is okay that you don't know how to give. So I'm expecting her to show up in a way that she doesn't even know how to show up. So you are, you're getting disappointed every single time, Brittany. She does not have the capacity. He does not have the capacity to do that. Or to show up. Or that friend doesn't have, you know, the capacity to do that. So, you're putting this, you're setting yourself up to ultimately get disappointed. When you should be expecting for God to do these things and not man. Because he says that man will let you down every single time. And so, it took me a while to spiritually um, be mature in that aspect to grasp grasp that. Yeah. That's really good. You said a mouth. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> no, do not <laughs> apologize. Like, this is what we need. So, I mean, you were talking, and I just started thinking, like, why do we put people on these pedestals? Like, why do we expect so much out of people when, you know, it says not to put confidence in men? Mm-hmm. Like, why do we do that? And I guess it's because those are our parents or our friends, and we feel like it's a safe place. Mm-hmm. You know, we look for these people to validate us, to build us up, but... They really can't. They can only do so much yeah. if they only have so much. Like if I have you five, if I only have five dollars, I can't give you six. If I only have five, yeah, you That's know. Real. So, yeah, I'm like really just processing what she just said because I don't know if you're really like taking this in, but I think we all need to take some time and look at areas where we've had um, people to do things to us to hurt us and holding on to it like. Well, you did this to me, and, and we say, uh, I forgive, but I don't forget, you know. But when you say that, do you really forgive that person? Mm-hmm. Are you still holding that grudge? Yeah. Because when that person comes around, you're just like, oh, hey. You know, like. You haven't really forgave. You haven't really forgiven them when you do that, though. Yeah. Like, you still hold on to it. You mad. <laughs> you just, it took so much energy to do all of that. Like, see, she's still mad. <laughs> What Mark say? What y'all loving it? <laughs> He's so goofy. Oh my gosh! But yeah, I mean, we really have to look at it. And when you do that, you become emotionally locked up. Like you become emotionally locked mm-hmm. up inside because you really can't be free to be who you are in in other areas of your life. If this other person is like holding on to this piece of you, it's like you really have to release and let it go. Because if not, I mean, you're kind of blocking your blessings. And you're allowing that person to have power, control power, power yeah yeah and it's like nobody should have that control over yeah. you you really have to another way that has helped me with forgiveness camille is we're sinners and we sin and we sin and we sin and we ask for forgiveness and forgiveness and i'm like yo if god if you can forgive me time after time and sometimes mm-hmm. for the same exact thing who am i not to forgive mm-hmm. like that's not my place I didn't say forgive and not have healthy boundaries. Y'all. Or use wisdom. Yes. <laughs> but you still have to forgive that person yeah. and not. Some people are like, well, I'm just not there yet. Like, I just be thinking like, yo, what if God just said, Brittany, I'm just not going to forgive you. I'm just not there yet. Like, I would be in a world of trouble. Like, Devastation. Okay. <laughs> yes, I really would. So, yes, command to forgive instantly. Yes, you still have to process it. Just, again, just because you forgive that person, that don't mean you have to allow them back into that space. But you do need to forgive them instantly because guess what? When we don't forgive them, we thinking about it. You, 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 you're calling your, your girl like, girl, believe I can't believe they did this, you know, and they did that. And what inner, that person probably not even thinking about you. Sleeping like a baby. And you have taken <laughs> all of that energy yes. 
And this is why you need to forgive because when you forgive, you're supposed to let it go. And love doesn't keep, you know, record of wrongdoing. So you free yourself when you forgive. Yeah. It's a process. It, it is. <laughs> it is a process. And the thing is, you also have to take accountability because it takes two. Yes. It takes two, and you have to think, well, what role did I play in this situation? That's very good. So, the, the same thing that she just said, my therapist has taught me that. What? She, yes. she said <laughs> that those exact words, though. She was like, you know, ask yourself, what role did I play, literally? Mm. And so, when I'm in situations like that, I say, okay, well, Brittany, what did you do? Because we always like to point the finger, but that that's real. What role did you play? I feel so smart and enlightened. <laughs> Seriously, I, my therapist, she dope. I love her. Hey, therapist. <laughs> hey, Angie. <laughs> well, you have really dropped some new newels. Jewels, y'all, these braces be wearing me out, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> what nuggets, takeaways do you have for the listeners and the followers? Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. That's number one. The other thing is forgive like God has commanded you. So think of yourself when you when it's time to forgive other people. Mm. That's number two. Like don't harbor it. Forgive them just like that. Think about how much forgiveness you need. Yes. Mm. Day after day, time after time. And so that is what's really helped me. Like I forgive you. That don't mean I got to rock with you. You know, I know where to put you, but I forgive you so I can move forward and not harbor that. Right. So just always remember that, y'all. And then put your spiritual glasses on. Mm -hmm. Like, And what I mean by that is everyone is not where you are. Right. And when you can understand that, that will help you through the forgiveness process. Like, you may be at a place where you can accept when you're wrong, right? Like, me, you can be into it. I can accept that. And what if you're not in that place? So I'm going to be mad at you and you have not matured to that level? No. So I'm going to say, you know what? In this instance, you know, I see that I have to be the bigger person. Because a lot of people always say this too. Well, why do I always have to be the bigger person? Why do I always have to forgive? Why wouldn't you? And why would you stop your blessings? Mm -hmm. And if someone else is not in the same capacity as you, mm -hmm. you forgive them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and sometimes give them grace. People, give yeah. them grace and yeah. sometimes people will not apologize. So you're well, going to be sitting there waiting for years for someone to apologize to you. And what if they die? It happens. What if they die? <laughs> How can you have a conversation with someone that's no longer here? How about that? <laughs> you so, can't. You can't. So, yeah, my takeaways is, you know, and also therapy. So, therapy does help. I hope that you guys are advocates of therapy. Um, I don't know everything. So, sometimes I, I, I love to tell my therapist my business. So, <laughs> like, girl, I can't wait to tell you though what happened. Because she helped me process things, yes. you know. Talking out loud helps. It really does. <laughs> um, so, therapy is one. And not holding on to things. Forgive people instantly. And think about yourself and how you, you know, want forgiveness. And to free yourself, don't allow people to have that control. So that will be the third thing. Awesome. Well, first of all, Brittany, thank you so much for joining my me. Pleasure. This thank is my you first for live me. in person interview. I think you went well. I had fun. <laughs> I love to talk anyway, too, Jack. It's okay. Definitely yes. got to bring you back for sure. <laughs> so, where can people get your merch and connect with you on social media? Okay. So, come join the Faith Fam, y'all. So, the website is www.faith dash walker.com and you know how they say um i say again in the military um www.faith-walker.com faith walker was taken so i had to put a dash in there yeah and on instagram it is faith walker apparel so check us out i pray um that you enjoyed this podcast thank you for having me i enjoy myself girl thank you sister girl <laughs> <laughs> well everybody this is your host camille essick i'm the host of the speaker podcast and until next time be blessed thanks guys bye 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 y'all <laughs>